All right, so I've got another NPC upgrade build for you guys today. And today we've got something a little special for you. Today, we're looking at the Dauphin Student Pilot's Tester AC. Now, this build has a couple of major issues, but the main issue is not the inferior internals. It's not the open shoulder unit, no. The main issue with this build is the complete and total lack of Dauphin weapons. Not a single Dauphin weapon on the Dauphin product sample. What are you doing from soft? What are you doing? Anyways, I lied to you. This isn't a build upgrade. This is a lore upgrade now. That also happens to be a build upgrade, right? Now, what have I done with this build? Well, first thing I did was move the missiles over to the right shoulder unit and slap the Dauphin Bazooka there to pair with the Pulse Blade. Now, the Pulse Blade itself is already a very good weapon, and I'm sure you're all familiar with how powerful a Bazooka melee weapon combination can be. It's, of course, very, very strong. Even with melee arms that aren't super great, like the Tin Chang arms we have on this build, the Pulse Blade is still very powerful. And again, with the Bazooka to back it up, it's a pretty dangerous combo. Now, the frame itself, I left alone since it's a Dauphin product sample. I left it with Dauphin frame parts. And other than upgrading the internals, that's pretty much all I did. And I think this build has actually turned out very, very good. It's a pretty fun build, and it's quite strong. Now, that's enough talking about it. Let's go ahead and get into the details. All right, now, start with the weapons. First, like I mentioned in the intro, the kind of the main focus here is just going to be switching to more Dauphin weaponry. Because despite this being a Dauphin product sample, there's just an appalling lack of Dauphin weaponry, right? So first, for the right arm unit, we've got the Changshin machine gun switch from the original Rensetsu AR. Now, last I checked, maybe it's been buffed since I last paid attention to the weapon. This is already not a very good weapon, but I was going to switch it no matter what, pretty much. And obviously, if I want to switch this to a Dauphin weapon, if I want to go to a, a rifle, at least, a machine gun of some kind, my choices are either the Changshin or the Hubin, right? And I just felt like the Hu Bin was just a bit too much of a shift from the original, you know, assault rifle, right? But I felt like the Chang Chin was a great replacement here. Now, the Chang Chin itself is not a particularly amazing weapon, but it serves a good niche as just being a really good, you know, stagger maintainer, right? It's really good at maintaining a um, stagger bar. It also does, you know, like a decent amount of stagger over time. It's certainly not the best weapon for it by any means, but we've got better weapons and weapons just more focused on the generating Sagger on the build anyways to make up for it. Otherwise, this is just a really great weapon for maintaining Sagger, like while we're waiting for the Pulse Blade to cool down, or the Bazooka to reload, or something like that, right? Really, really good at maintaining Sagger. It's got, you know, a pretty big magazine. You can fire it for a pretty good amount of time. Really good at maintaining Sagger, right? Next, we've got the Pulse Blade, the Butter. <laughs> the Butter. Oh, man. Now, I love this weapon. It's really, really good. The Pulse Blade is, of course, in my opinion, at least one of the best melee weapons in the game. The light attack, the, the uncharged attacks are really good, for, especially for dealing stagger damage. The, uh, the charge attack is really, really good at catching people off guard because, you know, it does have more range than you think it does. I know I say this every time I talk about this weapon, but the charge attack will definitely catch you off guard, right? This is just a really, really good weapon in general, even with the, you know, the not-so-great melee specialization of the Tian Cheng arms, it still does quite a lot of damage on a direct hit. You know, it's very, very good. Now, moving on next, we've got the active homing missile. Now, I've switched this from his original left shoulder, um, you know, unit to being his right shoulder unit. Just wanted to move this over to make room for the bazooka for the melee weapon swap, right? Uh, and I decided to keep this just because not many ACs use this to begin with, and it did get buffed, and you know, the active homing missiles are actually pretty good. They do kind of suck against an opponent that's staying pretty grounded, though. It's one thing to keep aware of these things. Against a grounded opponent, if it goes past them at all, most of the time it'll just run itself straight into the ground. Just something to keep in mind. But especially against an airborne opponent, these things can just be absolutely relentless and incredibly hard to shake off. Really, really good at pressuring your opponent. And yeah, I actually like these things quite a bit now, even if they're definitely not the best missiles in the game, right? Now, moving on, the bazooka in the left back unit, the Zhuajie. Now, obviously, I actually have two choices here. I could have used the Gochen uh, grenade launcher, but I just found that it just took too long to fire, basically, right? It just didn't work very well with the pulse blade. They didn't work together very well, you know? But I decided to go for Zhuajie bazooka. And I guess the reason I went for a bazooka in general, other than just being kind of the only option for a Dauphin weapon, if I want to fill in the slot with a Dauphin weapon, right, is that this is a really common sort of sidearm for Balaam ACs, kind of bazooka or grenade launcher or something like that. So I kind of already decided that I wanted to do something along those lines. And it just so happens there's a Dauphin bazooka, right? 
And yeah, there you go. It's definitely not the best bazooka. The um, whoops. the Majestic is definitely quite a bit better in my opinion. But, you know, it's definitely not that much worse either to make, you know, just have to use the Majestic in this case. But, you know, and it fills the role of just giving him another Dauphin weapon, right? Which is, again, the main point. And yeah, that's all there is to say about the weapons. Now, I haven't made any changes to the frame. Like I mentioned in the intro, but since this is a Dauphin, um, you know, special or uh, product sample, right? I wanted to leave just all the Tianqing parts alone because it's a product sample. It's supposed to be Dauphin parts, right? So I left them alone. So let's go to move straight into the internals, actually. For the booster, I've switched his original 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out for the NGI-001, of course. This is just simply not a good booster for this build, pretty much in any way at all, right? I've switched this out for the NGI-001, which is just, sure you're all very familiar with these boosters by now. Super high thrust, high quick boost thrust, good assault boost thrust, melee attack thrust, and, you know, just decent thrust all around. And it is, you know, does support builds on the heavier side. Although this build is just getting a little bit too much on the high side for the, for, you know, these thrusters. You know, 0 0.66 cubes reload time from the base 0.63. So we're not so far overweight that is significantly affecting mobility, thankfully. But, yeah, especially with the pulse blade that melee attack thrust is very important. Definitely want at least decent melee lunges, right? So, you know, very, very important to have good uh, melee attack thrust. And yeah, just way better than the original option, of course, right? Now, next for the SCS, I switched this original Abbott out for the Tau Butt. Uh, I decided to stick with a Balaam SCS primarily just because, you know, they're a Dauphin, uh, or Dauphin is a subsidiary of, of Balaam, right? So it's kind of a Dauphin part, kind of, sort of, right? Um, but also, it's just a good FCS in general, good medium range assist, good close range assist, and decent missile lock correction, which is really quite nice of an upgrade for the uh, active homing missiles, right? There's a lot of extra missile lock correction. Uh, and this build is kind of a build that typically wants to play at kind of the border between close and mid range a lot of the time. So that medium range assist to help keep tracking, um, not getting, you know, too thrown off is quite nice as well. But uh, yeah, you know, technically could use something like the WLT-001, which offers a similar spread of stats, but with better medium range assist. So if you want to play a bit longer, but again, uh, just wanted to stick with the Bale FCS more than anything else, right? Now, next for the generator, I've switched this original Ling Tai out for the Sand Tai. Now, obviously, the big thing here is just need more energy output for one, but big energy bar, decent energy recovery. It's not the best, but considering how much energy bar you have, it is pretty nice, right? And the energy recharge delay isn't super high either. Now, you could also use the Ming Tang, which does have a lower recharge delay in this case. It's also quite a bit lighter. But I didn't think it was really worth enough. Color. This build is already so heavy, right? That the extra five <laughs> quick boost or boost speed is simply not going to make any sort of difference, right? So I just went for the big heavy sand tie, get that big energy bar, and you know, again, the decent energy recovery, right? And then finally, he doesn't have an expansion originally. This is the you know going to Balaam, big explosions. Of course, the assault armor was the obvious choice here, and uh, yeah. About all there is to say about the build as always I hope you guys enjoyed the video and before we get into the gameplay footage as always quick thank you to the members any amount of money you guys are willing to you know pay for the membership you know out of just wanting like being able to see the videos early if you do like the purple cat tier or higher or just because you want to support the channel it's always greatly appreciated any amount now let's go ahead and get into the gameplay footage System activating combat mode. Let's get started. Raven. Astro Crown's pilot, Callsign King, has an 89.6% mission success rate. His reputation for finesse is such that he's advertised as the ideal mercenary. Unblox is piloted by Chartreuse, an aggressive bulldozer with unrivaled firepower. Those who've seen her at work call her an unstoppable force. Intercept the two targets. There's our Merc. Go take care of the objective, King. I'll clip this one's wings. Not alone. This is a branch mission. I'll support you. This is a branch? You're just in Gen 4. You belong in the museum, not PC. 
don't know when to quit. Just like all the other ravens. This pilot's no raven. Why won't you die? Chartreuse, withdraw! Abandon your AC! AC on Barack's destroyed. Mission accomplished. <laughs> 